Welcome back again to Anaheim, California. Along with Bob Trumpy, this is Sam Nover. The temperature remains very nice. The humidity about 87%. The score is 21 to 7 Miami. And the statistics are one of the few things that change from week to week, Mr. Trumpy. Sam, you mentioned the temperature is about the same, but I imagine in the Los Angeles Rams locker room, someone was rather hot. Look at those offensive stats for the Rams. 93 total yards, 37 yards passing. That is incredible. The... Uh, Miami Ram Miami Dolphins have been sacked no times the Los Angeles Rams twice so time of possession somewhat deceiving the only score by the Los Angeles Rams that block punt for a touchdown Delvin Williams is averaging 34 yards a carry on two carries one for 68 the other one for four and Tony Nathan has done an excellent job and David Woodley we I repeat, came into the ball game stating that he was the 28th ranked quarterback in the NFL, had thrown for just about a 48% completion percentage. Well, in the first half, he was 9 of 14, 105 yards, and two touchdowns. You know, Bob, we, we talked about the offensive line of the Miami Dolphins at the beginning of the broadcast. As you look at Vince Ferragamo on the Los Angeles Rams sidelines, they are waiting for this uh, halftime activity to end. We set this game up in no small way talking about the Miami offensive line and in due respect to them the last couple of games they have gelled a little bit better. They have not allowed Woodley to be sacked that uh, I think I don't have a stat on it today. I don't think he's been sacked at all has That's, he. I just said that Sam. He I'm has sorry. not been sacked okay. today. And Ferragamo this, has been sacked twice. This is a Los Angeles Ram team that had 31 sacks entering the game and so the offensive line is starting to get its act together but more important Woodley is starting to know what to do with the football. And on the downside you just saw the other quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams. That's Pat Hayden. And I wonder if Ray Malavasi now might be tempted to put Ted, Pat Hayden in. I think it would be a mistake. Uh, he really has not had a lot of playing time since he came off the injured reserve. He was out for the first four weeks of the season. He's still rusty. And I repeat, even though Ferragamo is cold, he is a quarterback who can get hot and can get hot very quickly. Well, this halftime show has gone a little bit long, I think, to say the least. The players are halfway out in the field, at least on the Miami side. And you don't see this very often. The National Football League usually has its halftime shows confined very nicely. But for some reason, uh, this... This has gone a little bit long, and I think it has something to do about uh, the uh, hostages in Iran and, in a way, uh, an American tribute to those uh, 52 American hostages in Iran. And it certainly is uh, excusable, to say the least, to let this thing go long in their, uh, in their tribute. Okay. They, they've spent over a year there. We can spend another two or three minutes waiting on them to finish. Oh, Lord, yes. David Woodley, the young man who certainly has uh, started to turn Miami's fortunes around in no small way here today. He hasn't had to throw the ball as much as it might seem. And he has done something today that he perhaps hasn't done in the past few games, and that is to throw the ball downfield. Yeah, Sam, let's, let's mention it right now. As you look at the standings in the AFC East, I want to bring up the record of the Los Angeles Rams. Now, they are a gifted football team. They have a great many good football players. But do you realize that their victories have come over Green Bay, the New York Giants, San Francisco, St. Louis, San Francisco once again, and New Orleans. They are now playing their first AFC opponent today. Actually, their first AFC East opponent today. They still have to play New England, the New York Jets, and the Buffalo Bills. Now, Don Shula has had a tremendous amount of success against the NFC. But the Los Angeles Rams, in winning six games, really have not played anybody yet. They and Excuse me, Bob, and the only important game they really have played as regards their uh, their division race, they lost to Atlanta. Correct. Albeit a, a, a prayer pass by Bartkowski late in the ballgame. And the, and the Atlanta Falcons won today in overtime, 33-27, to 27, I believe, over the St. Louis Cardinals. So the Rams must win today in order to stay on top, or at least tied, with the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC West. Well, we appreciate you bearing with us here on the a little elongated halftime program. It certainly was... Uh, for something that's uh, significant in the American way, and that is a tribute to the hostages in Iran. It is completed, and we are about set to play football again. And you're looking at Frank Corral, who will kick deep. He Tony, hopes. Tony, <laughs> he had a couple of punts early on that only traveled 30 yards, but he'll try to get this one deep. Nathan. 
Besselu and Nick Giaquinto are deep. On the far side, it's Giaquinto to the 20, to the 25, and trying to spin to the 27-yard line. And he's brought down there by Carl Ecker, number 55. So the Miami Dolphins take the second half kickoff, return at 12 yards, and go to work leading here by 14 points. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, and it is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. Well, what does Woodley do for an encore? <laughs> I don't know. We're about to find out. Tony Nathan, number 22, and Steve Robisky, 38. Or rather, Terry Robisky, 38, and the backs behind. David Woodley on first down from the 26. Play action again. Tight end screen. Number 86, Ronnie Lee. Still on his feet as he stumbles to the... Oh, and he breaks away. And the whistle blew and he still didn't go down. Ronnie Lee took a couple of hits along the way, 11 yards on the tight end screen. And as you talked about earlier, the Los Angeles Rams have made some mistakes in tackling, Bob, and it was evident there. But they look totally confused. I mean, there are people just wandering around out there. Look at Jack Reynolds. Good play fake by David Woodley. And there's nobody out there. Look at that. There is no one there to make the tackle. Not the cornerback. Finally, Jim Youngblood comes in from behind. And you don't want a weak safety. You don't want someone like Leroy Irvin tackling Ronnie Lee, who is 245 pounds. That's the linebacker's responsibility. So it's first down at the 38, and Nathan gets the call, trying to break through a little hole to the 42. Larry Brooks, number 90, hanging on for dear life. So it'll be a gain of about three on the carry, second down at seven. The Miami Dolphins just uh, totally confusing the Los Angeles Rams defense. They did so quick throughout huddle. the entire first half, and they are going again with a quick huddle. Nathan and Robisky remain the setbacks behind David Woodland. He's got time to throw the ball, and he arches one of the sidelines, and it's... No catch. No catch. Intended for Jimmy Cephalo and his third year out of Penn State. The poor kid has caught two passes today. Both have been nullified by penalties, and this one was just a bit underthrown. Here's Cephalo once again, and he is replacing Duriel Harris, who is out with a... A, apparently a, a torn hamstring which is very very dangerous but a good pattern man and he comes back for the football I'm not so sure that this ball wasn't really thrown at Tony Nathan who was five yards underneath him but Cephalo coming back trying to make it the reception now third down and seven speaking of replacing Leroy Irvin has replaced Rod Perry at that right cornerback spot to start the second half Jeff Delaney makes it five deep backs now for the Rams on third down and six that's Nat Moore in motion oh Nat Moore over the middle Threw it in behind him, and he made an excellent catch at the 50. And that's good enough for another Miami first down, and Moore refuses to go down. And look at the frustration. Get to the rookie Joe Rose and Jimmy Youngblood, the linebacker. Nine yards on the catch, and Nat Moore had to reach behind him to make it. And look at the smile on Woodley's face. Well, he's thrown it behind several receivers today, but they've certainly come up with the big catches. That was a delay. Moore coming in motion to this side of the field and goes back over the middle. No middle linebacker. And you'll see this is a tough catch, but Nat Moore's made a lot of them like that. And Sam, I noticed, too, at halftime I was walking out through the press box, Paul Warfield is here. Certainly a former great Miami Dolphin receiver. And NBC commentator. From the 49 of Los Angeles. First down again for the Dolphins, who just are moving the ball beautifully today. And the game is to Robisky. And he got cut by Leroy Irvin, number 47, as he picked up a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Let's update you again on some of the other scores in progress. There is a shocker down the coast here in Southern California. Denver leads San Diego 10 to 6. Fred Steinford, a 38 yard field goal. Oakland continues to lead Cincinnati 21 to 10. That is up the coast here in California. Seattle leading Kansas City. It is now 17 to 10. Steve Fuller has just thrown a touchdown pass to Tony Reed. And Buffalo got a Roosevelt League score, one yard run, 24 to 10 over the Jets. And Philadelphia leads New Orleans 24-14. You are up to date. Second and seven. He wants it all. Throws it downfield for Nat Moore, and he reached high in the air. Went up for the ball with Pat Thomas, and neither of them came down with it. And Moore wants an interference call. He will not get it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's probably telling it, well, you don't blame me for trying, right? I can lobby. Safety blitz by uh, the Los Angeles Rams. Johnny Johnson in there, and... and Woodley's face and he really couldn't put any steam on the football. That was the back judge Roy Clymer. I don't think we've mentioned the entire crew. They've done an outstanding job today. Dick Jorgensen the referee John Keck the umpire. 
Haggerty is the head linesman. Hantech, the uh, line judge. Roy Clymer, the back judge. Uh, Royal Cathart, the side judge. Dick Dolak is the field judge. That's the whole crew, and they've done a great job. Third down at seven for Woodley. Pumps. Going to run with it. 40. Spins for the first down. Good second effort by David Woodley. Initial contact by Leroy Irvin. He spun off that tackle. Eight yards on the carry, and he's got another first down. And he certainly brings another exciting dimension to Miami Dolphin offense, doesn't he? Uh, that is now seven carries for Mr. Woodley. 42 yards, and that's six-yard average. And I'll tell you one thing. He can certainly run the football. He's got the guts to stand up there, too. Even in the days that Bob Greasy was doing everything you could ask of a quarterback, he didn't have near the mobility that David Woodley does. So they have a first down at the 38, and the Miami Dolphins have taken the second half kickoff and just thrown it down Los Angeles' throat. They did it in their first series in the first half. Delvin Williams looking for a block to the 35. Dragged down from behind by Jack Reynolds. And as we progress in this game even more, Bob, what you mentioned early in the game is more evident to me, and that is we are not calling Jack Youngblood's number and we're not calling Fred Dreyer's number. And uh, two of the best defensive ends there is in the game. I noticed that even Freddie Dreyer is out of the game right now. Reggie Doss is playing the other defensive end. There's Youngblood. He was spelled at, at the end of the first half by Ray Malavasi. Doss came in for him for a while. He's an all-pro player, has been for years. The NFC Defensive Player of the Year in 1976, but this is four years later. And the Rams are fighting to remain in a tie for first Look place with Atlanta. Robisky, a big hole for a first down. Inside the 30 to about the 26. It depends on where they spot it. But Robisky, after an eight-yard scamper, will get the first down. And John Giesler, Bob Kuchenberg, Mark Dennard, Ed Newman, and Eric Loxo are doing the job for the Miami Dolphins today. That's their offensive front. And we set this game up as the Miami Dolphins inexperienced three of the players with very little experience. You can see that score from the kingdom, but they have done a fine job all day long today against Los Angeles. They are well within range for Uwe von Schaumann. First down and 10 at the 26 of L.A. The Dolphins 27 and 5 against the NFC. Woodley throws it short. Good move by Williams. Breaks Look at the tackle that. to the 15. Looking for a block to the 10, and it's first down and goal to go Miami. Miami Dolphins are not giving up. I think there is a. Yeah, they said his knee was down. They're going to bring it back. But how many times have you seen teams come out in the second half with a lead uh, like the Miami Dolphins doing? Be conservative. Not so with the Miami Dolphins. They're pulling out all the stops. Once again, uh, hate to put it right on the coaches, but it appears to me that Don Shula is out coaching Ray Malavasi. Here's the play again. Delvin Williams spun around, touched, knocked down by Thomas. His knee Good touched. Call. Good call is right. The officials have had some, some tough ones to make today, and they've done it every time. Second down and six. The ball at the 22 of L.A. They fake the uh, pitch and give inside to Robisky, and he gets about a yard. Good defensive play by number 85, Jack Youngblood. Oh, we finally get to call his number. He was not fooled as they fake the wide pitch and gave to the inside man, Robisky. Well, you watch Robisky try to cut it back here, and he does appear to cut it too far back. You see, it's a fake pitch to Nathan, and he cuts back. Brooks misses the tackle, and Youngblood is standing right there to uh, knock Mr. Robisky back for about a yard and a half loss. Here's a pretty important play to L.A., third down and four at their 21-yard line. Woodley with one setback. It's Tony Nathan. Looks over the middle, and he's got a man at the 12-yard line. Tony Perfect. Nathan for the first down. They may spot it closer to the 14, but it's uh, Carl Eckerd's coverage on Nathan. Seven yards on the completed pass, and they're picking them apart. And the best thing about that one was Tony Nathan knew exactly how far he had to go for the first down. He knew he had to get about seven yards. He went seven yards and two feet. Woodley throws it to him, and it's a first down, and Miami is driving. How difficult is it for a young quarterback like Woodley to, to, to uh, show this kind of discipline and patience, Bob? Well, after, off the way he's played the last few weeks, I think it's absolutely phenomenal the way he's playing. He's got it going. He, he's got a lot of self-confidence today. Williams behind a block by Kuchenberg to the 10, picking up about four yards. Jack Reynolds made the stop. The 11-year veteran out of Tennessee. And that's the first time we've been able to mention his name. Hacksaw hasn't done much, uh, had much business up in the middle there today. Well, I guess out here in L.A. they call that a Reynolds wrap. No, they don't. They wouldn't <laughs> dare. <laughs> They wouldn't dare say that. Second down. And, and neither six. would you, would no, you? No, no, of course not. From the 10-yard line, second down and 
six. Two setbacks for Visky and Williams. 21 to seven Miami. They are looking for more. Delvin Williams. Nothing doing. Nolan Cromwell plugged that one up very neatly as did Reggie Doss and linebacker Reynolds. Mm, New Orleans has scored. At the Superdome, Archie Manning to Brooke Williams, eight yard touchdown pass. It is 24 21, seven and a half minutes to go, third quarter. And the Eagles have their hands full today. You probably heard the New York Giants beat Dallas 38 35, which is enough to ruin a lot of people's afternoon, isn't it? Only those in Cowboys. Second, or rather, third down at six now. And Nat Moore going in motion. Woodley's had plenty of time today. Now he'll scramble a bit. Fakes the there pass for the run for the end zone. Touchdown, David Woodley. How about that? Hasn't he been phenomenal? A 10-yard scamper by David Woodley. He has thrown two touchdown passes. He has run for two others. Watch this. Watch this. Don Shula. He sees him break outside. Little body English. All right. The man is in the end zone. Do you believe that? Miami now has had the football about nine minutes of this quarter. Nine minutes against the Los Angeles Rams. This is an offense that averaged 259 yards a game. Had that in the first half. That man right there had quadruple bypass surgery about four years ago. Let's hope this game doesn't affect him uh, adversely anyway physically. Here's Uwe von Schaman. Out of a Don Strock hold. Attempt to make it 28 to 7. I, you know, there are times like this I wish I were in other ballparks around the National Football League to hear the reaction of the crowd when the score is announced. You want to hear something even more ridiculous? Woodley has 52 yards rushing. The Rams, 56. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Here's Uva Von Schaman's kick. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy in Anaheim. Drew Hill at his eight yard line. The Rams got to get it going. And he gets back to about the 25 and it's snowed under right there. Number 43, Jeff Allen was the man who made the tackle on Drew Hill. A 17 yard return. And I know you're sitting out there in disbelief, whether you're a Ram fan or a Dolphins fan. We talked about it at halftime. There was only one way we expected this game to go. We talked about it with the truck. Kenny Fouts, our director. Ken Edmondson, our producer. You, Trump, me, Nove. We've all talked about it. And we thought the Rams would come out with fire snorting from their nose. And it certainly, uh, the Dolphins quelled any. Look at that statistic. Would you believe it? <laughs> Woodley has almost outrushed the entire Ram team today. That's it. From the 25, Ferragamo was still the quarterback with Cullen Bryant and Wendell Tyler. And Ferragamo's got a man over the middle. A good catch by Preston Denard. And that is only the second catch by an outside receiver today by the L.A. Rams. 27 yards. Ralph Ortega made the tackle, but Denard gets him a first down in Miami territory. And there's also going to be 15 yards tacked on the top of it for a late hit. I'm kind of surprised. Ferragamo in the first half was 9 of 19, now 10 of 20. And this will make it about 80 yards, but a fine, fine catch by Denard. No doubt about that. Excellent catch. And I do believe you'll see the late hit, too. When he goes to the ground, then right there. That's 54. Made the late hit. Out for take. So all of a sudden, the play becomes uh, 42 yards net. The Rams move from their own 25 to the Miami 33-yard line. And they have a first down at 10. They're going to have to strike and strike quickly with 5.51 to go on a moving clock here in the third quarter. They can strike quickly, too, Sam. Yeah, they have averaged 48 points a game. Their last three here in Anaheim. Tyler for a couple. Stopped by Ralph Ortega, six-year veteran out of Florida who was acquired from the Atlanta Falcons. And attended the University of Florida, so Ralph's obviously happy to be playing back in his home state. Gain of four, second down and six, and Ferragamo's got a light of fire underneath the L.A. Rams. Colin Bryant behind him, along with Wendell Tyler. Ferragamo floats one down the sidelines, and he overthrew his intended receiver. Billy Waddy was the intended receiver. Let's get an update on that San Diego-Denver game now. Here it is from Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York. 
Thank you, Sam. A little south of you in San Diego, Fred Steinford is up the Broncos lead with a 42-yard field goal. The Bronx lead the Chargers 13-6. Let's go back to Anaheim. I don't believe what's happening around the league today. Sam, you mentioned that Ferragamo's got a lot of fire on the Los Angeles Rams. Well, it's going to be difficult because the Miami Dolphins on that last drive consumed 8 minutes and 40 seconds, 15 plays, and 73 yards. There's not a lot of time left. Here's a handoff. Tyler trying to score it away. He does. Takes another big hit and spins for more yardage. A great individual effort by Wendell Tyler. Glenn Blackwood is the man who finally knocked him down, but that'll be a Rams first down. There is a great football player out of UCLA, Wendell Tyler, coming off a dislocated hip. Only the second game he's played this year, Bob. Six yards on that carry, and I'm sure if there's anything that makes the Los Angeles Rams happy, I suppose it is the performance of Wendell Tyler today. He's done an excellent job carrying the football. Now nine carries, 37 yards. He didn't start until the fifth game last year, and he ended up rushing for 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. Waddy in motion. Ferragamo, late rush. Knocked him around, spins away. He avoids another tackler. Looking in the end zone, he's got a man, and it's oh. Wendell Tyler. Huh. We just gave him all the plaudits, and Tyler dropped six points in the end zone. Hmm. That looked like it hit his ejection button. <laughs> Boy, that thing bounced off his shoulder pads and went five yards back up the field. But once again, I think Ferragamo was very, very lucky. He throws this in between two or three guys. There's Dewey. Been present all day in the Los Angeles Rams backfield. Den Herder can't make the tackle. Now watch as you see the ball thrown. The Miami Dolphins going across in front of this ball and see if it's tipped. No, just bounced off his shoulder pads. And yeah, Wendell Tyler knows he should have had it. No, oh, that's wonderful camera work too. Followed him all the way. Great shot from behind. Pitch Ferragamo. Second down. Ferragamo steps up in the pocket. Lost one Under down thrown. in the end zone. Intercepted. No, they say out of bounds. And Ferragamo forced that one into double coverage. It was not a very wise selection by Vince Ferragamo at all. And underthrown. He was pressured once again. The Dolphins have been around him all day long. And it was A.J. Dewey again who made him rush. And Willie Miller on the pattern. You see Small on the coverage. A good move to the outside, but then Small comes up underneath. And you can see that the ball is underthrown. And you can also see he gets one foot down inbounds and didn't really have control of it. Good call by the officials. But now third down and 10. 419 to play in the third quarter. Third down and 10 for Ferragamo. I would not believe the Rams would settle for anything less than a touchdown here. On this series is what I mean. The field goal is kind of meaningless down 28 7 and look at that. Doug France moving out too early. A legal procedure against the Rams. It is now third and 15. That's the second time he has done that. Well, I guess when it goes bad, it goes bad all the way. Ray Malavese, Lionel Taylor, and the sunglasses behind him. Nobody wants to look the game directly in the face, do they, at this juncture? Sam, I got a feel that the Los Angeles Rams just mentally were not ready for this football game for whatever reason. As you said, in the last three games, they have scored 51, 48, and 45 points. You get a tremendous feeling of security when your offense does that. And something like this happens. Just a matter of concentration. Third down and 15. Three wide receivers. Denard, Miller, and Waddy. Ferragamo has a man over the middle, and it's incomplete. Yes. Flag Good down call. in the end zone. Good call. Interference, perhaps, against Eddie Taylor, the fifth defensive back. Good call. No, it's offensive interference. Oh, you're It's joking. going to be against Billy Waddy. I'm kind of surprised because Eddie Taylor did not have his eyes on the football. And normally, in that situation, they will call it on the defense. Watch this. You'll see Taylor. Well, he, oh, I take it back. He, he was look looking around, for the yeah. football. Absolutely. I take it back totally. Billy Waddy was the man guilty of interference. And I'll tell you what that does. If Malavese had any thoughts at all about a field goal, it's out the window. Interference, number 80, offense, still third down. Great call. They take the penalty. Why would you take the penalty? That now explain that one to me. It'd be fourth down if you refuse the penalty. Takes him out of field goal range. Well, he isn't worried about a field goal, is he? Don Shula trailing and leading 28 to 7. And you don't want to give him any points on the scoreboard when you got it going your way, Sam. This reminds me of Malavese's decision in Atlanta when he gave Atlanta one last shot at a touchdown, and Barkowski drilled it for the first touchdown in that game. 4-13 to play in the third quarter. Third down for Ferragamo, and he's down. That's why they took the penalty. Yeah, Shulam knew what he was doing. 
Third sack for the Miami Dolphins today. A.J. Dewey had one, now Doug Petters. On Doug France, probably their most consistent offensive li lineman at left offensive tackle. You can't blame Ferragamo for that. Now the question is, Pat is, Hayden, is that what you're thinking about? 28 to 7. I wonder if Malavasi will turn to Pat Hayden and say, that's it. So on fourth down, Corral is in to punt. Tony Nathan in single safety back at his 10 yard line for the Miami Dolphins and the Dolphins are expecting something funny. They got three guys rushing on fourth and 37. I would doubt it. Corral arches a high one trying to hit the corner and it goes out of bounds and it just depends on where they walk it off. The official coming up the sideline stops at about the 14. Oh, he's still coming up. 17 yard line will be the line of scrimmage and the Dolphins have it back again another 30 yard punt for Frank Corral good shot though he hit the uh, Los Angeles Rams mascot on the sideline <laughs> nothing's happened right there he is well, I want to get in the way <laughs> of that Ram today oh my <laughs> Bob Trumpy back in Anaheim. We're told that Rod Perry took a knock on the head in the first half, and uh, as a precautionary measure, the Rams are going to keep him out the entire second half. Leroy Irvin will go the rest of the way, and the question here is when the Rams get the ball back, will that gentleman uh, be in the lineup? What do you say, Bob? In the bullpen. He hasn't warmed up yet, though. Tony Nathan and Terry Rabisky remain the setbacks behind David Woodley, who was having some kind of day. He won't soon forget this. Straight ahead, Rubisky for a couple of yards. Let's again go to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York for an update. Bryant? Thank you, Sam. Strange doings in the Kingdome in Seattle. Watch this one. Jim Zorn rolls left. The play started at the eight. He's looking for Sam McCollum. Instead, he finds number 24, Gary Green. He tries to run it out from seven yards deep, loses the handle at about the 15. Of course, it lines up in the arms of Seattle. They're up by 10. Sam? Well, ours isn't nearly as weird, but it certainly is a shocker. The Miami Dolphins lead the Los Angeles Rams 28 to 7. Terry Robisky has just taken a short pass of nine yards from the quarterback, David Woodley, and he has moved the sticks again. And the Dolphins, who possessed the ball so brilliantly in their first drive here in the third quarter, are at it again. They have a first down at their own 28 yard line. And I I'm sure that Don Shula would probably tell David Woodley to be very, very careful with the football here. Go with the high percentage stuff, leading 28 to 7. I repeat, you don't want to give the Los Angeles Rams any momentum whatsoever. Steve Howell, number 36, is the up back, but the pitch goes to Delvin Williams, trying to get outside to the 30. And a flag is down as he goes out of bounds at the 32. Penalty marker is down. Pat Thomas ran him out. I was thinking one of the only things that have gone right here in Los Angeles holding is the indication against Miami. One of the only things that uh, has gone right in Los Angeles today, Bob, has been our great support crew, Art Hoffman, Chuck Panama, and Dennis Manishin, who have kept us in this football game in no small way. And the Los Angeles Ram partisans of 69,000 have had precious little to cheer about, haven't they? And they're not used to it. Holding number 68, offense, still first down. And that would be Eric Loxo, the third-year veteran out of Tulane. And he hasn't done much wrong. The offensive line has played brilliantly for Miami today. They have simply neutralized the Los Angeles defense. Wow. And that upset continues down the coast here about uh, an hour and a half in San Diego. Denver leading the Chargers 13 to 6. They have just shut off Danny Fouts today almost completely. Ralph Minershka, a couple of field goals, and that is it for San Diego. First and 20 after the 10 yard walk off. Woodley to pass. Throws it to Cephalo Ooh. and it was deflected, I believe, by number 20, Johnny Johnson, the number one draft choice out of Texas. We haven't talked much about him, Bob, but he was a catalyst for a lot of contractual problems here in LA that continue today. Signing for six years, a million one. And when the veterans heard about that, they went in in Moss. To complain to Don Klosterman, they walked out before camp. And uh, Los Angeles is tired of the story. I guess maybe the whole world is, but it continues in varying stages. Different players every week unhappy with their contract. Ferragamo, Brzezinski walked out this week, and they don't think they'll ever see him again. So there is unrest in L.A. Under two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Miami leading Los Angeles 28 to 7. Williams or Nathan it is to the 30. And 
Falls it across to the 31 yard line. Carl Ecker in 55 is on top. And on the bottom is number 76, Cody Jones. So it's third down at 17 for Miami. That young man got a start today. He's played very well. And what it's done, it's enabled Delvin Williams to play in spots. And he has played very well also. So maybe Shula has resolved his running back problem. Give Williams a rest. Stumbled on a solution. Yeah, he had. Williams' first carry today was for 64 yards. But it's Nathan in the lone setback position now on third down. Joe Woodley Rose. Airs it out to Joe Rose, and it's incomplete. <laughs> A little high for Rose. The coverage there by Johnny Johnson. And so it's fourth down. And George Roberts will have to punt. Double rotation zone by the Los Angeles Rams. And to try to get, throw it to the spot where it's open. But uh, good recovery by Johnny Johnson. Here's Malavasi and Ferragamo. What's he telling? Get me 21 points in a hurry. If, if, he, if my head coach told me that, I'd give him the helmet. Mm, Denver has scored again. It is now 20 to 6. The Denver Broncos leading San Diego. Dave Preston, a five yard run, and Red Miller got his troops up for that game. It is obvious. That's going to throw the AFC West into shambles. Every division uh, still very competitive at this stage of the year. The Leroy Rams. Irvin is a single safety. Sorry, Bobby. Uh, I was going to say the Rams appear to be rushing the punter there. Irvin couldn't avoid the second tackler brought it back to the 40 yard line dropped there by number 43 Jeff Allen a 45 yard punt and a five yard return so the Rams with Ferragamo go to work and only a minute 23 to play in the third quarter minute 23 to play in the third quarter the Rams have the ball at their own 40 yard line they need three touchdowns to get back in the football game as incredible as it seem, may seem to some people, it's 28-7 Miami at this point. And the score is truly indicative of the uh, dominance that Miami has shown. Denard and Waddy are the wide receivers, both split to the near side. Everybody out in the pattern. Ferragamo oh, has all sorts of room, 45. And he fell shy. I think he probably elected to run much too late in the program. He picked up eight on the carry, but if he had left about three seconds earlier, Bob, he could have gotten about 20 on it. Sam, I was not watching the quarterback. I was watching the receivers on this side of the football field, and the tight end, the man in motion, and the flanker were all at the same spot at the same time. It appears to me that they, the Los Angeles Rams are not really thinking about this football game today for some reason. Well, Atlanta has already beaten St. Louis in overtime, so at this moment, the Atlanta Falcons are 7-3 and three in first place in the NFC West. If the Rams should go on to lose this one, and they're doing it now, there'll be a game out. Here's a screen to Cullen Bryant. Down the sidelines and out of bounds at the Miami 47. Again, let's quickly go back to Bryant Gumbel at NFL 80 in New York. He has another update for us in this big day of upsets in the National Football League. Bryant? Thank you, Sam Nover. Same update, only this time with sound. Dave Preston from five yards out taking it in. The Broncos lead the Chargers 20 to 6. Sam? I don't believe it. I still don't believe it. Mike Gooman now in the backfield for Los Angeles. I guess you'd, you'd get used to it doing a game every Sunday and hearing all the scores that Bryant gives us on the updates if you think, my goodness gracious, it's just normal. The unpredictable is predictable, but some of these things are amazing. Well, that's why the football has points on both ends, so you never know where the ball's going to bounce. I wondered why. Ferragamo play action. He's got a first down, and he throws it. Caught by his tight end, Victor Hicks. And he goes down at the 37-yard line. And Hicks was well covered. A 10-yard completed pass. And oddly enough, Besselou had what looked to be great coverage on the tight end, Victor Hicks. And it's been that way all day. Miami has played superb defense. And even when the Rams have gotten something offensively, the Dolphins have given it up begrudgingly. And the seconds tick away. We're about done with the third quarter. I don't think they'll get the playoff either. Ferragamo wants it here in the third quarter. He's already set. He throws an out pattern. It's caught. And out of bounds goes Billy Wadi. What's he doing? I don't know. He wanted a free play, I guess, in the third quarter, and he got it because the time has expired, and we have but 15 minutes of regulation time left. Now, wait a minute. Have they called this back or not? Nope. Time has expired. Three quarters are gone. The score, Miami 27, Los Angeles 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
Nice to have you back with us in Anaheim, California. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy. The Dolphins only six minutes and 30 seconds more than the Rams, but they certainly have dominated the football game. In the second half, 11.03 for the Miami Dolphins, 3.57 for the Rams. Well, that's where they took the uh, dominance away, didn't it? I think I said 27-7 the scores. We went away to that break. It's, of course, 28-7. Mike Gooman for some yards. Still on his feet. Finally brought down to the 22-yard line. Tackled by Ernest Grown, 55. But that was the most aggressive piece of running that we've seen by a Los Angeles Ram today. Nine yards. Well, Wendell Tyler had a good one earlier, too. Nine yards on Gooman's carry. It'll be uh, first down for the L.A. Rams as you look at Don Shula. And that's how they've done it today. David Woodley has had a hand in all four Miami touchdowns. He's thrown for two, and he's run for two. And if he's not NFL Player of the Week, I don't know who is. Ferragamo has time. Now the chase is on. Dumps it off, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Victor Hicks. He almost got thrown down back at the 35-yard line. A.J. Dewey had the pressure on Ferragamo. And I'm just wondering, Bob, you pointed out earlier that uh, three Ram receivers that ended up in the same zone, are they just running bad patterns? Or? Well, I think the Miami Dolphins uh, defensive backs are doing a great job of covering him. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams receivers. And also, the pressure has been consistent all day long. That uh, four-man rush that Miami puts on with moving Dewey up on the line of scrimmage and at times rushing Kim Camper from the outside linebacker spot. More times than not, has really confused the Los Angeles Rams. Here it comes again. Dewey on the bottom of your screen there. Now watch him rush the passer. Three wide receivers. They hand it off to Gooman on the draw. And an excellent play by number 75, Doug Betters, who was not fooled. He stayed at home looking for the run, and he made the tackle on Gooman, so it's going to be third down in about 10. Betters now in his third year out of Nevada, Reno, at 6'7", 260, and he just chased A.J. Dewey out of a job, although Dewey was hurt in all due respect to A.J. Sam, you mentioned the scoring earlier in the ballgame. There's Buffalo over the New York Jets in Shea Stadium, 24-17. to Worth commenting that a few people tuned in late, the only touchdown produced by the Los Angeles Rams was a block punt that was caught in the end zone and that's the points they've scored it does bear repeating the offense has not generated a point today third down and ten for Ferragamo has time throws it to Willie Miller intercepted oh. by Besselou Gerald Small. Gerald Small number 48 well it may have been a case of mistaken identity but to the Miami Dolphins it doesn't make any difference Gerald Small picks it off and he did a hell of a job to do it you'll pardon my expression it was a hell of a job second interception <laughs> by on Vince Ferragamo today once again pressure this ball should not have been thrown oh what a great interception I mean, small was there underneath the receiver exactly as he should be Miami takes over so with a score 28 7 following the interception by Gerald Small the Miami Dolphins have it at their own 20-yard line. Ferragamo took a little congratulatory, not a congratulatory pat, but a don't worry about it pat from Pat Hayden on the sidelines. Commiserating. I don't think that would help much to you. He's got to feel just terrible today. And Williams doing a spin around in the backfield. Still on his oh. feet. Breaks into the open field at the 30. Look at the tackle. Reaches the 32-yard line. Jack Youngblood is the man who made the stop. That's an interesting set, Bob, where he just spins around in the backfield. Sam, I want to tell you, I've mentioned this before. I didn't think the Los Angeles Rams, after that 12-yard gain by Delvin Williams, I didn't think the Los Angeles Rams were ready to play the football game today. One of the real uh, easy ways to tell is the tackling. Watch the tackling on this play. I leave it to your discretion. Does it appear to you that the Los Angeles Rams are playing tough football? Uh, Cromwell just rode him for three yards. Look at that. Just try to push him down. Uh, that, that is a football team whose mind is somewhere else. So it's first down. Not only on the effort by Williams, but the ineffectual tackling by the Rams. And here's the throw sideline pattern. Cephalo makes the catch up at the 35-yard line. Bob uh, Kearney, the PR director of the Miami Dolphins, has just informed me, and I think this is a very graphic statistic, Bob. Some are meaningless. With Gerald Small's interception, the 14th of his career, 10 of those interceptions have come inside the 10-yard line, which means when people are in the scoring area, Small comes up with big plays. And that's the most difficult part of the field to cover nowadays because you're only allowed that one chuck. Once they get in the end zone, you've got to run with them step for step. 
Rod Perry has returned to the lineup. We had not expected to see him again. He took a rap on the head in the first half. Leroy Irvin had been playing in the third quarter, but it's Perry now as Robisky searches for daylight and dives to the 39-yard line, where he'll come up a couple of yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down at about two. Seattle now finds their lead dwindling to 23-17. Steve Fuller passes to Henry Marshall 11 yards, and the Seattle lead is just six up the coast in the kingdom. And if they win that game, the Seattle Seahawks, it'll be their first win in the kingdom in 1980. It will indeed. Miami rushing 207 so far today, 149 passing, 356 total yards. Last week, they had 66 yards rushing. And they're doing it against the number four defense in the NFC. Fifth against the rush, fourth against the pass. The Los Angeles Rams, Delvin Williams trying to dive for the first down. May have gotten it. Reggie Doss, 71, is a man who made the stop. Philadelphia continues to lead New Orleans 27-21. Tony Franklin early in the fourth quarter, a 30-yard field goal. And so the Saints remain within a touchdown and an extra point of pulling off yet another big upset today. It's 27-21, the Eagles. Dallas has been beaten by the New York Giants. You can rest assured that Philadelphia already knows about that. Atlanta has come from behind to beat St. Louis. If the Rams go on to lose this game, they will fall a game behind Atlanta in the NFC West. First down for Miami. The lone setback is Robisky. He is an interesting story. Terry Robisky played for the Oakland Raiders, was claimed as a free agent by the Miami Dolphins after they had cut him earlier in the year. And do you know what Robisky was doing when the Dolphins gave him a telephone call? Trumpy, do you know what he was yes, doing? I do. do you? Yes. Digging a septic tank in Louisiana. And they said, put your shovel down and come on to Miami. It's got to be a better life. And he did, and he found a home. And Shula's reclamation project of the year may be Terry Robisky. Look at him. He's really into the game, isn't he? Second down 11 from the 40. Woodley back to pass again. Now young foot. Putting the heat on, and the pass is to Cephalo. And I'm still waiting for a signal. I guess he stepped out of bounds. Pat Thomas had the coverage on him, an incompleted pass. Well, Cephalo's caught the ball four times. Only one of them have counted. Two penalties. This one out of bounds. Oh, right on the line. Good call by the official. Mm -hmm. One they did count. You know, Sam, the Miami Dolphins have 22 first downs so far today. The Los Angeles Rams just 10. And worth repeating, even though it was against the New Orleans Saints last week, they had 468 yards. And we're close to that today. I'm glad you mentioned the first down statistic because coming into the game, Miami had 40 fewer first downs than their opponents, but they'll uh, eat up some of that deficit today. Here's a third and 11 now for David Woodley and only one setback. Audible. Delay of game, it'll be third down at 16. Yeah, interesting graphic, and they only had one first down, I believe, in the fourth quarter uh, last week against Oakland. Well, you knew it was a portent of things to come for the Miami Dolphins when they outscored the Rams in the first quarter 7-0. This is a team that had been outscored on the road in 1980 in the first quarter 57-6. to And they outscored the Rams 7-0, eclipsing their entire total for the year, and you knew it had to mean something. Nick Giaquinto in on third down and 16 now for Miami. Total blitz. And he hangs it up there for Cephalo. And Cephalo did an in cut. And somehow Woodley was looking for him to streak down the sideline. It'll be fourth down. One of the very few things that David Woodley has done wrong today. Nolan Cromwell and Pat Thomas had the coverage on Cephalo. They don't seem to have missed Duriel Harris any today. So George Roberts on fourth down now will punt for Miami and he'll be punting the number 47 Leroy Irvin. There is nobody back there. Wait a minute. Wait yeah, a minute. There is nobody back for the Los Angeles Rams. Now I knew they were. Uh, now Irvin. No, they don't have 11 guys. Two, four, six. Irvin eight, is ten. still looking for something to happen here. They're obviously just going to let the punt roll dead. They can't be expecting Miami to uh, do anything but punt it. They're coming on the rush. They have 11 guys on the field. They sure did. And they all came on the rush and the ball will roll dead at about the 28 yard line. 
So the Rams, forsaking the return, put 11 men on the line of scrimmage, tried to get to it. They did earlier in the game for their only touchdown. 36 yards on the punt by Roberts. We'll be right back. We were just talking about that AFC West. Uh, Seattle had a chance until that interception. Of course, they're still not dead, but that race is up for grabs. If Oakland holds their lead over Cincinnati and Denver continues to beat San Diego, the Oakland Raiders will be on top of the AFC West. 9.52 to go in regulation time. The Rams are down by 21 points, and Ferragamo trying to get a hump back. Completes his pass upfield to Preston Denard, number 88. And a first down up around midfield. 22 yards on the completion. Gerald Small is the man who made the stop. And Ferragamo trying to hurry him along here. It is possible. Don't count the Rams out. This team is tremendously explosive. But Ferragamo's got to give somebody an indication that they can score today. They haven't as yet, the offense. 9.25 left in the fourth quarter. Still going with just the two wide receivers. Ferragamo over the middle. And off the hand of the intended receiver, who I believe was Victor Hicks at tight end. Glenn Blackwood had the coverage, but Hicks just couldn't come down with the football. And the clock stops on the incompletion, 9.14 to go. Ferragamo stats on the day. Will do something to uh, probably decrease his position as the number one passer in the NFL. And worth repeating, he had five touchdown passes last week against the New Orleans Saints. His best game as a pro. I hope we're not coming down too hard on him because he's got a brilliant future and he's obviously had a great year. This has just not been one of his days. And to the credit of Bill Arnsparker and the Miami defense, they have found a way to stop him. Here's a handoff inside to Victor Hicks. A tight end Ooh. reverse. Hicks bounces off a couple of people. Much to the pleasure of the crowd here in Anaheim. And gets the first down to the 32. Glenn Blackwood dropped him. But an 18-yard tight end reverse to Victor Hicks. Well, they've had very little to cheer about here in Anaheim Stadium. So when Victor Hicks bounced off Larry Gordon, and number 46, Vesselu, watch, watch the way he gets through this tackle. He puts his head down and yeah. <laughs> That's a true Ram, isn't it? Yes, it is. That is a true Ram. From the 32, LA try to score offensively for the first time today. They trail Miami 21 to 7. Paragamo throws it out in the flat and almost caught. And Small did another brilliant job of just waiting to Ferragamo released it. They have defensed the Los Angeles Rams perfectly today. That ball was intended for Preston Denard. And Gerald Small was right there. And Vince Ferragamo got a, has got to be wondering, is it me? Is it the Miami defense? Is it the Los Angeles Rams team total? What's happening today? I think it also bears repeating something I mentioned in the first half, Bob, that if you're impressed with the Miami secondary today, consider this point. Between the four of them, McNeil, Besselu, Blackwood, and Small, they have but seven years of experience. So Bill Arnsparger and Don Shula will have that group for a long, long time. Here's a second down to 10 for Ferragamo. Fires it in a good catch and then drops. No catch, no catch. Now they rule no catch. One of the officials came in to spot the point of the catch, but they said that Waddy didn't hold the ball long enough. And very little has gone right for the Los Angeles Rams today. There you see Waddy on the isolate, and he has been one of their most consistent receivers. Comes back for the football, as he should, but McNeil makes a good tackle. Uh, I don't know. I think that's a catch. I think that's a catch. You don't have to bring the ball in. That's Sandlot rules. You don't have to get possession of it. I think he had it to the ground, and then it was jarred loose by the ground. So that's a catch and a fumble, and he recovers his own fumble. Third down and 10 now for the Rams. They deploy both of their wide receivers to the right, 88. Denard and Billy Waddy is number 80, slotted. Mike Gooman, play action. Ferragamo wants it all. He's got a man down. Field, touchdown, Rams. Number 81, Victor Hicks, the tight end. Touchdown, but Sam, do you realize that it took him almost 52 minutes of this football game to score a touchdown? I do. 52 minutes, finally. Ferragamo's got something to celebrate about. Well thrown pass. Pressure once again in his face. And a good pattern run by Hicks. But it's just a little too late. Oh, we'll get some excitement through an onside kick. And all kinds of stuff happen in the next eight minutes of this football game. 20th touchdown pass of the year for Ferragamo. Corral will try to add on the 14th point of the day. That is the first touchdown catch of Victor Hicks's career. 
and flags are down. And it was just a beautifully thrown football. Number 78, offense. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, well, an extra point. Look at Hicks, 81. He's over Blackwood. That's a fine, fine catch. And I think a better throw by Ferragamo. We put it right where he had to. 72 yards, six plays. The Rams trying to get their extra point. 32 yards, the touchdown pass from Ferragamo to Hicks. So this extra point will be like a, a chip shot field goal now for Corral coming from the 15 yard line. Nolan Cromwell puts it down. It's up and good. So it's a 28 14 game. Can the Rams come back? 8 13 to play. Once again, a half rollout. Pressure on the outside. He puts it right on the money. Laces up on the right foot. And Hicks goes up to get the football. 52 minutes it took them for their first touchdown. But they finally got on the board. Out in the mud of Shea Stadium, the Jets have moved into a tie with the Bills. Scott Durkin going in from two yards out. It's 24 all in the fourth. Let's go back to Anaheim and Sam Milford. Okay, Brian, I think we got one here, too. The Rams 28-14. They're down by two touchdowns, but certainly not out of it with just under uh, eight and a half minutes to play. Giaquinto breaks a couple of tackles to the 25, and almost impossible to bring down, it seems like, every Miami runner today. And Giaquinto is not the biggest man in football. 17 yards on the return. Giaquinto at 5'11", 204. You want to see an interesting spike? Watch this. You've seen a lot of them in, through the years. Victor Hicks. No, no, give it to me. Preston, don't spike it. Now, now do your thing. <laughs> My only comment to that is it appears that the Los Angeles Rams practice the spike more than they have anything else, and it's shown today. Ooh, ooh. Interesting comment. That was very well coordinated. Unfortunately, the offense hasn't followed suit. From the 30-yard line, Miami now must possess the football. David Woodley's stats don't look all that impressive, do they? But what it doesn't tell you is that he's thrown two touchdown passes and one for two more. He has had just an absolutely magnificent afternoon for the 13th quarterback drafted in 1980. Fumble! Oh, Rams got it! Uh-oh. I think they took it right out of his hand. Uh-oh. Gary Robisky, the ball carrier, and Jack Reynolds just stripped him of the football, and the Rams are alive. That may be the first turnover of the day for the Miami Dolphins. We'll see what the Rams Reynolds credit for the recovery but Mike Fanning deserves all the credit for having forced the fumble of Terry Robisky. He put his left hand right in knocked the ball right out of Robisky's grasp. Reynolds was there to pick it up. Now let's see what the Rams do. They have a first down at the Miami 33 yard line. They trail 28 to 14. Going for it all. Ferragamo pumps. Throws it in the end zone. He's got a man intercepted by Miami or no. no. Out of bounds. Oh, 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 oh. oh was that close? Wait a, minute, wait a minute, one of them's calling it in, the other one's calling it no interception. That guy says no interception. There's another guy back there saying it's a touchback. Now we're going to have an argument. Oh, Don Besselu has come up with the biggest play perhaps of the entire football game. And Bob is exactly right. Two officials called it two different ways. Yep. The line judge, that man right there, called it an interception. The back judge or the side judge called it. No interception. They're going to give the ball to Miami. Well, Bessel is showing his teammates how he did it, and he did make a magnificent interception. It looked like they had the receiver free and clear in the end zone. Preston Denard, I believe, was the intended receiver. Where are the Rams? Where are the Rams coaches? Watch. Let's watch. Bessel up. Makes the interception. The official's right there. One foot is down. No way. I don't think so. Not we even can't, close. Wait a minute. We can't see his left foot, though. And the momentum, if it carries him out of the end zone, that is no interception. He must be knocked out of the end zone. So the Miami Dolphins come up with a big play and a wee bit of luck. After turning the ball over on the very first play, Vince Ferragamo throws the interception to Don Besselu. And now Tony Nathan carries it for about two yards. It'll be second down and eight. And the Dolphins trying to go back to work on the clock again. George Andrews is a man who made the stop. I'm surprised that the Rams coaches didn't... Uh didn't protest to that call. They may have. I, my eyes were not down below here, Bob. They I, didn't move from the sideline. Okay. I guarantee you if they made that call on Don Shula, he'd have been out at the 20-yard line. 
You know, don't forget uh, Malavese had quadruple bypass. He doesn't want it again. Oh, I about see. four years ago, and I'm sure he does. Ooh, Philadelphia now has moved out to a 13 point lead over New Orleans. Mike Hogan, a three yard run. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter of that game. Here it's 28 14 Miami. A little pitch out to the tight end. Hardy in a first down for Miami. As he's knocked out of bounds up around the 33 yard line. Bruce Hardy's first catch of the day. And Carl Ecker knocked him out, but a completed pass for 10 yards. Now seven minutes left in the ball game, Sam. Miami needs to drive the ball down here use about three minutes off the clock look at that Malavese he's he's complaining he is complaining I don't know what he's complaining about I think it'd be appropriate to say that David Woodley has nickeled and dimed the Los Angeles Rams to death today he's thrown for under 160 yards but he has really had a marvelous time running the offense for Miami and he certainly has been instrumental in all four of their scores here's Delvin Williams Trying to get outside to the 40 45 and brought down another Miami first down and he almost broke that one all the way like he did earlier today 17 on that carry great block by Bob Kuchenberg out in front of Delvin Williams too. student body right somewhat characteristic of the, the Miami Dolphins offense a few years ago with what's his name Larry Zonka watch this watch Bob Kuchenberg number 67 lead up through the hole. Along with Terry Robisky, Ed Newman, watch the block right there on Johnny Johnson. Takes his feet right out from underneath him. And it's 17 yards. Eight rushes, 106 yards, and 64 of those in the first carry he had on the day. Under six and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Miami has another first down. And Robisky head on. Hit there by the middle line of the outside linebacker, George Andrews, in the second year out of Nebraska playing again today because of the absence of Bob Rudzinski, who walked out of camp on Wednesday of this week and uh, many people think he may not come back first touchdown of the day by the San Diego Chargers Danny Fouts to John Jefferson a three yard pass however it came with only a minute 26 to play in the game and the Chargers trailing Denver 2013 Sam an interesting stat handed handed us by Bob Kearney the Miami PR man that's Delvin Williams first 100 yard game since November of 1978 here he is again to the 45 oh. And he's on his way. One more man inside the 20. And another first down. Jim Youngblood with a saving tackle. 31 yards by Delvin Williams. Well, obviously, Delvin Williams is a lot better running back coming off the bench. Nathan to start. Delvin Williams to come in in relief. Look at this total domination. Again, Kuchenberg, Newman, Robisky, the same trio ahead of Delvin Williams. And they clear the area. He may have been buried prematurely. I think a lot of people thought that maybe Delvin Williams was finished. What is that average? Nine rushes for 136 yards? I don't have my uh, computer, my little uh, thing here. That's a lot. You know, Delvin Williams and John Riggins are the only two football players to rush for over 100 yards in two different conferences. Or don't no. you care? Sure. I do. At the 10 yard line again, Johnny Johnson making the stop. That statue just saw on the uh, TV for Delvin Williams. That's his all time high for the Miami Dolphins. Don Shula can be well pleased with whatever game plan he and Arns Parker devised today. Uh, It'll be a quick trip back to the East Coast, their second trip out here to the West Coast in two weeks. They traveled 12,000 miles to win one and lose one. And they felt they could have beaten Oakland last week if it were for something in the second half. They had five possessions, only one first down, and they lost to Oakland 16 to 10. Stumbling to the five yard line is Delvin Williams. He's done it all in this series. And maybe Woodley's going to break the spell here. He's had a hand in all four of the touchdowns. And maybe he'll take himself out of this one. It's 28 14 with under four minutes to play. And it's safe to say that Woodley can ice it with a score here. Williams is aver averaging somewhere around 14 yards a carry this afternoon. That's not a bad running back. I'd give it to him more often. I don't know if you had a chance to make this point on the air, Bob, but. I think we, you said it to me once while we were away for a break. This game was particularly important to Los Angeles, not only because Atlanta won, but because they've got New England next Sunday. It's the start of four games against AFC teams in five weeks. Delvin Williams sporting to the three-yard line. They have played exclusively in their own conference for the first nine games of the Los Angeles Rams. But in the next five weeks, they'll play four AFC opponents and will... Uh, they obviously would like to do better than they're doing here against their first. Sam, four AF, AFC East opponents, New England, the New York Jets, and Buffalo. Three of those, two of those are very, very tough opponents. And the Jets are giving Buffalo all they can handle today. At last report, that game was tied in the fourth quarter. 
Under three minutes to go, and Woodley has done the job on the clock. He and Delvin Williams are just a magnificent offensive line today. They have run the daylights out of the football. The handoff on the dive is to Robisky. And let's see, to about the two and a half. It'll be third down now. It's a goal to go situation for Miami. They got to get in the end zone, but if they don't here, I'm sure Shula will gladly take the three. That game is now final down the coast in San Diego. The Denver Broncos have pulled off wow. another upset today. They have beaten the San Diego Chargers 20 to 13. Isn't that something? The San Diego Chargers won in Mile High Stadium for the first time in 10 years, and then Denver turns around and does it to them in San Diego. And they won big up there, too. Yes, they, they did. They won very big. And they won big in Cincinnati last week, but they came home and lost to Denver today. Third down and goal. Woodley wants to throw, and he's got a man. Touchdown, David Woodley's third touchdown pass of the day. That is the tight end, Bruce Hardy. Actually, Sammy had his choice. Delvin Williams was open, too. It's rather reassuring. Well, we spoke very badly of that young man to start the football game out. Very badly. He had very little success, but the people in Miami have said, this guy is a keeper. This guy is a good football player. He has just really had his problems with the offensive line. But he has certainly responded today. Five touchdowns by the uh, Miami Dolphins. Uh, Woodley runs for two and throws for three. To whom do we apologize? Maybe to David personally after the game. Huh? And all of his relatives. And the offensive line. And Don Shula. Here's the extra point by Von Schaumann. It's up and it is good. An 80-yard drive in 10 plays. Elapsed time, 5 minutes, 45 seconds, all following Don Besselu's second interception of the day. And would you believe that score? We don't. But it's real. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy, we are in Anaheim, and that face tells it all, doesn't it? A unhappy Los Angeles Ram cheerleader, knowing that this one is out the window. It's 35-14 Rams, and Drew Hill at his seven. Reverse to the 15. The give now is to Irvin on the reverse, and he's out of bounds at the 30. They didn't fool anybody. I think, though, Sully, it was number 37 who had the uh, ball on the reverse. The flag is down. And the Los Angeles Rams will go to work with about 2.01 to play. Sam, even though we set this football game up as the Miami Dolphins probably not having a chance to win, do you realize that the Dolphins have now won 10 in a row against NFC opponents and 12 of their last 13? I do realize that, and uh, I don't know if anybody's well, prepared to talk okay. about it. Maybe there is something to this AFC-NFC stuff. I think entering today's game, AFC had won 19, NFC Personal 9. Personal foul, flipping. Number 55 on the receiving team. First down. Well, I do think when you talk about this particular game, that the Miami Dolphins with their different kind of pass rush, using Dewey in the line of scrimmage, using Bo Camper as a blitzer, and also the, the, the genius of Don Shula on offense and Bill Arnsbarger on defense has really confused the Los Angeles Rams for most of this football But that game. doesn't deal with the AFC-NFC thing. And uh, that's 28 and 5 is just too impressive a record to be accidental, Bob. And the Miami Dolphins, and I don't expect that you have, you know, have to have the answer to it, but they're 28 and 5 against the NFC, and there's got to be a reason. I gave you my best shot. You handle that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, we've reached the uh, two-minute warning, perhaps mercifully for the Los Angeles Rams, at least on this Sunday afternoon. I'm sure they will be back before uh, 16 games are played in the 1980 season, but they're going to lose this one today. Well, that area was described by our director, Ken Fouts, as the penalty box, and the front four of the L.A. Rams are in it. Yeah, I would imagine that Mr. Malavese is going to be very upset with the poor tackling of that defensive line and also the linebackers and the defensive backs. I think we have to absolve Phil Murphy of some blame. He happened to be there, but he hasn't played all that much today. Ferragamo, good catch by Gooman, spins away down the sideline to about the 33-yard line. Mike Gooman, the rookie out of Penn State, a sixth-round draft choice, 12 yards on the completed pass, and the Dolphins will gladly give them that kind of yardage for the duration of this game, which is a minute 37 on a moving clock. 35 to 14. The Dolphins are 5-5 five and five now. Here's a quick pitch to Waddy, and he bobbled it and couldn't hold on. He got hit by Besselu and also Don McNeil, that rookie out of Alabama. You know, now in eight of their uh, ten games this year, the Miami defense has held uh, its opponent to 17 points or less, and barring a Ram touchdown here, that uh, would be kept intact. That would be the eighth time in 10, hmm. matter of fact. Hmm. 
So it's second down. The clock stopped with a minute 29 to go from the 33 yard line of the L.A. Rams. The New England Patriots are next and it doesn't get any easier. Gooman the screen dropped the football. Mike Gooman dropped the ball. Well they've dropped their share. Let's get some stats on Ferragamo if we can. Right, look at him. Don Shula still coaching and make no mistake about it. The Los Angeles or Los Angeles Rams have been outplayed today and they've been outcoached. And you Los Angeles Rams fans can address your letters to Bob Trumpy, care of NBC. No, 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 no. Wrong. Wrong. I don't want any of that. <laughs> I can't imagine that they do not agree with me. No, I'm sure you know. They're obviously outplayed. It would take, uh, take a fool not to be able to recognize that. But outcoached is another thing. Karagamo over the middle. And the pass is caught by the tight end, Victor Hicks. And the Rams quickly stop the clock. Nope, continues to run a minute 11. Tackle made by Ernest Roan. And the clock continues to move, and the Rams trying to get something else on the board here. Ferragamo 16, now 17 out of 38 on the day for 185 yards, and Roan almost pulled off another interception, which would have been Miami's fourth of the afternoon. And that young man has not, uh, not dirtied his uniform at all. Certainly no fault of his own, but uh, Ray Malavese has decided to go with Ferragamo all the way today. H Hayden played with three plays last Sunday in the big win over New Orleans. On the third play, 17 out of 38 on the day for 185 yards, and Roan almost pulled off another interception, which would have been Miami's fourth of the afternoon. And that young man has not, uh, not dirtied his uniform at all. Certainly no fault of his own, but uh, Ray Malavese has decided to go with Ferragamo all the way today. H Hayden played with three plays last Sunday in the big win over New Orleans. On the third play, he had the ball batted out of his hands, taken by a New Orleans lineman who took it downfield for a touchdown. And the next time Los Angeles got the ball, Ferragamo was in the lineup. Will he be next week? Here are our finals. Quickly catching you up. The Giants, yes, they did upset Dallas. Atlanta with a big win in overtime over St. Louis. We'll continue with them in just a moment. Second down and 10 for Ferragamo. Has a man wide open. He's got him at the 45. It's Mike Gooman in Miami territory. Let's continue to run the scores. Again, if you joined us late for any reason, there's the big blowout of the day. Minnesota over Detroit. I think Steve Bills quarterback in that one. And the Rams uh, call a timeout to stop the clock. Green Bay won. Another big upset. Denver over San Diego will continue. When we return to Anaheim, California, Lionel Taylor, Ray Malavese, along with Vince Ferragamo and Bob Lee. We'll be back in a moment. We would like to welcome those viewers that have just joined us. The Miami Dolphins and Los Angeles Rams football game still in progress with Miami leading Los Angeles 35-14. Disney's wonderful world will be seen immediately following the conclusion of this game, except over most mountain and Pacific time zone stations where it will be seen at its regular time. And we would also like to welcome those viewers in Tampa who are joining us today on WFLA-TV. The Rams have the football. It is first and 10 at the Miami 45-yard line. The Dolphins have just had an outstanding, nay, an incredible performance from their rookie quarterback, David Woodley, today. He has thrown for three touchdowns and run for two others. This one is caught. Get out of bounds. At the 32-yard line, the running back, Mike Gooman, could not get out to stop the clock. He was dropped by Ernest Groan. Sam Nover and Bob Trumpy, we are in Anaheim, California, and that's all that remains of Don Shula's fifth victory of the year. And as I mentioned earlier to our other viewers in the broadcast, that man in 17 years as a head coach in the National Football League has had but one losing season. 1976, the Dolphins were 6-8. and eight. He was in jeopardy and, of course, still would be in 1980. But the way the Dolphins have played today, Bob, they're going to hurt a lot of people down the home stretch. Let's quickly go to Bryant Gumbel in New York at NFL 80 for an update. Bryant? Thank you very much. Vince Ferragamo back to pass. First down, throws it, intercepted. Ernest Roan has the ball, and down he goes at the 25-yard line. A flag is down back here at the 35, but Ernest Roan with yet another interception for the Miami Dolphins today, their fourth on the afternoon. The executive producer of NBC's football is Don Olmeyer, the coordinating producer, Ted Nathanson. The telecast of today's game has been produced by Kenneth Edmondson and directed by Ken Fox. Our technical director, Rick Lombardo, associate producer, Bill Peters, and our associate director, Ray Benassi.
We have a 28 seconds to play. And the Miami Dolphins have the football again. And Don Shula will be able to run off one play. And it's all over for those two gentlemen. And if you talk to Don Shula after this football game, I don't think he can tell you of a game where he coached any better. He really orchestrated a victory. He really stole it from the Los Angeles Rams. And I think they, the Rams started out very, very slow, feeling that uh, off their performance last week against the New Orleans Saints, they had no problem. Don Shula today wins his 10th in a row, 10th straight against NFC opponents. And he's still coaching with 28 seconds to go, leading 35 to 14. Maybe that's why he's winning. And he's found a quarterback, which may be the most important thing of all to come out of this game. His patience with David Woodley has finally paid off. Yeah. Throw for three, run for two. <laughs> and Woodley just falls on the ball, and That's that it. will be it. I don't think the Rams can stop the clock. Why would they? No. Nope. <laughs> Very well put. So the clock now will uh, tick off the remaining seconds, and the Miami Dolphins will have their fifth victory of the year. And the Los Angeles Rams will find this defeat particularly hard to take because Atlanta came back from a 27-13 deficit in St. Louis to beat the Cardinals in overtime 33-27. Don Shula waves at Ray Malavese. And that's just about all there is. The final score says it. Don't forget, immediately following these local messages, Disney's wonderful world, Old Yeller, will be joined in progress over most of these stations, except most Mountain and Pacific Time Zone stations where it will be seen at its regular time. Good